Okay, so now that we're done with uh, Left 4 Dead 2, I'm going to show you what that converting process actually did. Um, I'm going to go to my Left 4 Dead 2 directory. Uh, Left 4 Dead 2. And, oh, another one, Left 4 Dead 2. And as you can see, it has created um, all these TGA files for every frame. It has created one TGA file. Now, the downside of this method is that, um, as you can see, every TGA file is nearly 7 MB in size. Um, and it creates 30 a second because the converting is locked to 30 frames a second. Um, so if you don't have a big hard drive or don't have a lot of space on your hard drive, you can forget about making long videos. There is another method you can use, however, uh, within the source recorder that won't um, uh, that won't make all these TGA files. It'll just create an AVI file straight away. However, I find this method easier, uh, and it creates the best video quality in the end, and it's also easier to edit. I will show that other method later in a different video. So, now that we have all these TGA files, we're going to have to stitch them together using uh, Virtual Dub. You can download that uh, for free, just Google Virtual Dub. Um, and when you've installed it, open it up, obviously. And before you start doing this, you might also want to um, install the XVID MPEG 4 codec, um, if you haven't already. I'm sure a lot of people have that installed. Now when you're in virtual dub, go to file, open video file, and um, it probably won't open the uh, Left 4 Dead 2 directory by default for you. So just look for the Left 4 Dead 2 directory. And then look for tutorial um, 0000.tga and open it up. Now what it has done, it has actually opened all the TGA files that are in there that share the same name. So you can just scroll through this. Right there. Now this doesn't have audio yet, so what you want to do is you want to go to audio, audio from other file, and select tutorial. It has put the audio in a separate file. Now go to audio again and select full processing mode. It's directly under uh, direct stream copy. Go to audio again, select compression and choose MPEG layer 3. Okay, now we gotta compress the video and set the frame rate. So go to video, frame rate and uh, change it to the third option. Change so video and audio durations match. Uh, now go to video again, select compression, and choose XVET and MPEG4 codec. Go to video again. This is an optional um, thing that I usually use in my videos. You have to download a plugin for Virtual Up for this. Um, it basically uh, lets you make fade ins and fade outs. You can uh, Google that. Um, just Google fade effects for Virtual Dub. Download install and then you can access it um, by going to video filters. I'm going to add a fade in to this video and I'm going to fade in from frame 5 to frame 65. Doesn't really matter. I choose frame 5 because as you can see the console is still visible, so is the, the menu. And uh, we don't want to show that in our video, so now select fade in from black in the fade parameters from the drop down menu. Okay, now also going to add a uh, fade out. Just enter the frames. And uh, choose fade out to black. Okay, okay. And now I want to make sure that it only starts saving from frame 5. So we're going to go to frame 5 here in our uh, slider. 
and we're going to select this button right here. Um, these are basically keyframes, sort of. They just allow you to uh, specify a part of a video that you want rendered. So you want it to render the entire thing. So press it, get to the end of your vid, press it again, the other one actually, uh, the one next to it. Okay, and now that's basically it. Go to File, Save as AVI, and uh, just let it render now. Save. Okay, now when it's done, um, you can just close this, and um, yeah, it'll show up right here as an AVI file, right where you saved it. Now, uh, clearly this is quite laggy for you because of Cam Studio, so um, yeah, here's the final results. What is a team, people? Same team.